Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I'm here to discuss Senate Bill 156 and why we as a body should vote to sustain the governor's veto. Senate Bill 156, also known as the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, has been promoted as a necessary measure to protect our girls. Protecting our girls is something that I choose to believe that every member of this legislature wants desperately and undoubtedly. Protecting our girls is something that I believe our governor undoubtedly wants. But members, not only is this bill unnecessary, I can assure you that it does not, in fact, protect our girls. Following from the veto message of Governor Edwards, I will lay out those reasons why it is both unnecessary and why it does not, in fact, protect our girls. First, Senate Bill 156 falsely claims that transgender girls are a threat to Title IX and women's sports. Of course, Title IX is a vital important when it comes to girls' sports. But if we want to support girls' sports, we should be providing more funding and more opportunities to play and also, also creating stronger laws to protect female athletes from harassment and abuse, not banning transgender youth from participating in sports or going after a problem that does not exist. Second, Senate Bill 156 would no doubt open the door to invasive and privacy violating incidents. The bill itself actually sets up a protection system for people who accuse girls of being in violation. This bill determines the ability to participate in sports based on an undefined and imprecise term biological sex, which would dangerously leave open the door for anyone, a coach, a fan, a player, a teacher, to accuse and humiliate any girl of not being a biological girl. This could lead to accused children being forced to undergo invasive examinations and other privacy violating tests. How does this protect our girls? Thirdly, by classifying teams based on biological sex, we would require that transgender girls play on a boy's team and that transgender boys play on a girl's team. Let me say that again. This law, by classifying teams based only on biological sex, would require that a transgender girl plays on a boy's team and a transgender boy plays on a girl's team. Not only would this create an unsafe athletic environment for transgender girls, but based on the definition of an definition of unfairness that's posed in the bill, it would create more unfairness in women's sports. Again, how does this protect our girls? Fourth, this bill would undoubtedly trigger lawsuits. In 2020, the Idaho legislature passed similar ban transgender banning athletes legislation from playing sports, and within months, a federal district court ruled that Idaho's law could not be enforced. Now, to the points around why this bill is not necessary, I have several reasons, because I just gave you reasons as to why this bill would not protect our girls. Currently, the LHSAA already bans transgender youth from playing competitive sports at the high school level. In fact, their policy is so restrictive that there isn't a single, not one, trans high school student in Louisiana who we can name who is playing high school sports above the intramural level. Not one. Not one. Because the LHSAA's restrictions are so tight. Second, 
transgender girls are not stealing scholarships or other opportunities. There is little to no evidence of any transgender girl ever receiving an athletic scholarship to college, not one. This bill is not about fairness and competition in sports. Again, following from the governor's veto letter about fairness, this bill includes kindergartners. Kindergartners who, the last time I checked, don't really play for competition. Kindergartners. If this was really about fairness in sports, then why doesn't the bill prohibit trans boys from competing with girls? Because that's what this bill will effectively do. Now, on the point about the economic loss, I've, I've followed the debate, and I could spend a lot of time up here discussing the obvious catastrophic economic ramifications of this legislation. I could do that, but again, I followed the debate. And it is clear that the proponents of this bill have decided that this symbolic legislation that solves no real problem in this state, but instead runs the numerous risks of what I've already laid out, is worth suffering such dire economic consequences, especially as we're trying to regain our economic footing. Members, I'm very proud to represent the district that I represent. A poll was cited uh, by Representative Schlegel in terms of how the state feels about this legislation. I can tell you that 81% of my district strongly opposes this legislation because I represent a district that believes in inclusion, not exclusion. Members, I want you to think about something. Think about if your daughter or your granddaughter, a biological female who just happens to be a superior athlete like the one that we had up here today, if she is accused of being transgender purely based upon her superior performance, how would that make you feel? Better yet, how would that make her feel? Members, we all love our daughters. We all love our girls. And we will go to the end of the earth to protect them. But the reality is, if this was a real problem, we would all be standing together, unified around this issue. If this were a real problem, we would have addressed this issue years ago. But this is nothing but a manufactured wedge issue that is aimed only at dividing us. And that is what it has done. This bill will not protect our girls. This bill will only further ostracize and alienate our state's most vulnerable and marginalized children. Children who suffer from extraordinary levels of depression, abuse, suicide, and violent attacks, which often, very often, end in death. We might not want to accept or understand the challenges that our trans youth face, but they are children, and they're our children, and their lives matter. Members, our trans children who are suffering from depression and homelessness, suicidal thoughts, violent attacks, they're not on a mission to dominate sports. They're not. They're on a mission just to survive. They just want to survive. I'm asking that you please do not vote to override this veto and that we sustain the rightful veto of this legislation. Thank you.